Hi guys. So anyone new to the channel might not remember a, a little figure that I had um, called the Lonely Orc. And this little chap, um, basically it's called the Lonely Orc because it was the only figure I actually painted. Well, I semi-painted him actually. Um, and yeah, I used him as a reference sort of size sort of guide. Uh, when I used to make um, scratch buildings and well, all kinds of like little sort of dioramas and bits and pieces. Um, yeah, he, he's what I'd use as a sort of size reference. I will just quickly say now, apologies, I have got a bit of a cold, I've got the sniffles, I've got a sore throat, so if I do sound weird throughout this video, or weirder than I normally do, um, that's why. So, yeah, this is a, a little bit of footage I found uh, from about, about two years ago, and this was the first time we saw the Lonely Orc. So I'm using this little Orc fella, just to get the rough sizes. As you can see, it's kind of unpainted, because I started it just before I packed everything up in boxes. So once I move into my new place, I'm going to continue painting him and all his friends. Well, clearly, I never did paint any of his friends because he kind of remained a lonely orc for a good year and a bit um, until I started painting again, well, quite recently. Okay, so this is going to be the Lonely Orc 2.0, as obviously it's not a replacement for, for the Lonely Orc, it's his upgrade. Um, well, so I guess that is a replacement. Anyway, you know what I mean. So let's crack on and see how I kickbash this little fella and how long it took to actually paint him. Okay, roll VT, or whatever it is you roll. I don't know, I'm waffling. Let's do it, do it, push the button. So here's a little sneak peek of the Lonely Orc 2.0, and yeah, he's definitely an upgrade on the first one, uh, more so because I think he's painted, and the first one never really got painted, um, mainly because obviously I hated painting uh, a year or so ago, and yeah, I was always reluctant to paint anything. And this can be seen by my bits box, which is, well, a good two years old and yet yeah, full of orc bits and pieces. Uh, there are a few other, other sort of pieces in here, but it is mainly orcs. Uh, lots of um, unsort of assembled bodies, uh, yeah, bike bits, all sorts. Uh, oh, there's one of the first figures I ever painted um, in one of the first videos I ever made. So, yeah, I did paint some figures uh, for a diorama. So I kind of pulled out the bits that I, I sort of like the look of. Um, I kind of like the body, but I want to make him a bit sort of podgy, uh, nice and round and robust. So I've got this, I think it's an ogre um, body part, I'm not too sure, I'm sure you guys will know. Let me know in the comments if you do recognise what the uh, the big belly bit is. So this is where I think the uh, the slap chop method uh, was more suited as a name for when you're kit bashing, as obviously you're chopping bits up and then you're slapping them together. Um, so yeah, so maybe the slap chop should be more of a sort of kit bash term than uh, yeah a painting reference so yeah it's a case of trimming this guy up I probably could have done this a lot quicker and easier possibly with my Dremel tool uh, but sometimes it is just a case of using what's to hand and as you can see I was using my snips and well snipping away until it's sort of it fit um, so I do like the big chunky body and obviously he's got some nice uh, nice delts on him there because uh, I do like my orcs to be uh, well pretty muscly um, and yeah, it was just a case of then gluing some bits together. So there were some gaps where things didn't obviously fit together that well. So good old bit of uh, green stuff. Um, obviously it starts off as being blue and yellow stuff. Mix it together thoroughly and voila, green stuff. Um, yeah, so mix this together and then use that to, uh, to sort of plug up or fill in any of the gaps. Because uh, obviously there are going to be a few here and there. Because um, you are sticking some things together that, uh, well, weren't meant to go together. But that's the great fun about the kit bashing is, well, you can make them go together and you can just fill in the gaps with whatever sort of material you've got at hand. If there is anything you guys want to see me kit bash, by all means let me know in the comments as I am now getting quite a lot of sets um, of other figures, obviously other than just orcs. Uh, I've got quite a few space marines and I've got quite a few other little bits and pieces um, turning up very soon. Uh, so yeah, by all means let me know anything you want to see me uh, kit bash in the future. I will be doing some scratch bashing as well soon, um, as I want to make some uh, more sort of terrain bits and pieces. So yeah, look out for that. And yeah, lots of uh, new sort of bits and pieces on the uh, on the horizon. And if you want to see what I'm currently working on before it comes out on YouTube, then consider becoming a patron like these chaps scrolling on your screen, as they get to see pictures, images, videos, all kinds of stuff on what I'm currently working on as I'm working on it, basically. Um, so yeah, big shout out and thank you to them, as well as my sponsors, Easy Roller Dice and Any Cubic, for helping sponsor the channel and making it possible for me to keep on buying bits and pieces that I need. So cheers, guys. 
So one thing I've definitely got a lot of in my bits box, and that's heads. Um, I say I can't even remember what orc box sets I brought, but I know I did buy quite a few when I first started this channel. Um, I say never <laughs> really ended up making any sort of orc figures other than the uh, the one lonely orc. Um, and I was also Crazy Dave, um, and he was one that I made up that used to go into any sort of um, any vehicle I'd make. Um, Crazy Dave was the sort of the test pilot. Um, so yeah, so there's a couple of orcs. But the Lonely Orc was the one that was always used to sit on my desk, just so I could use as a sort of reference for scale whenever I was making anything. So yeah, this chap's nearly done. There's just a few, obviously, more sort of weapons I want to put on. Um, again, this is just help hide where some of the bits join together, um, but don't join as well as, obviously, they would have done if it had been made to look how this is, that this is now looking. So yeah, good old weapons, and they just hide any little, uh, any little errors or mistakes in there. And yeah, this guy is ready to paint. And there we go. So obviously good old Slap Chop, Razzle Dazzle, Woofer Stufa, whatever name you want to call this this stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, obviously I love it. I think it's the, it's the best thing since sliced bread. This uh, this technique just makes things so quick, so easy. Um, especially for a painter like myself that isn't very good. Um, and can take a whole lot of time doing one miniature. So to be able to do this and do a miniature in around 15, 20 minutes is just amazing I so say I could easily spend two hours three hours painting one miniature um, and then not ending up liking the result which um, which obviously then puts you off painting because you're spending so long doing something that comes out looking pants but um, yeah this method for us noobs is just amazing and I, I did paint this during a live stream I did obviously mention then that this could be like a good base start so if you are a good painter and you can do the old edge lighting bit of OSL, uh, or the, obviously the non-metallic painting, all them other good shizzly things. Um, yeah, this would be a great start to your painting, and then you could obviously do those wonderful things afterwards. So yeah, this this uh, painting, obviously, I guess you guys are obviously wondering how long did it take me. Uh, I'll say, because I did it during a live stream, and if you've ever watched any of my live streams, you'll know that I, uh, I do sort of spend probably more time waffling, talking, um, than actually doing any of the work. So in reality, uh, this live stream went on for about two hours, um, obviously, but I wasn't painting him for the full two hours because I was doing, well, like I say, a lot of chatting. Um, and generally, whenever I do things on a live stream, I, well, I could almost do them 10 times quicker uh, if I wasn't doing the live stream. Plus the fact, again, another little excuse here, I have got a cold, I have got a bunged up head, nose, everything else. Um, and yeah, wasn't feeling my best. But um, yeah, so this dude, uh, it was done during the live stream, um, and I reckon if I wasn't live streaming and I was feeling a bit better, I could probably do this dude maybe 15 minutes. Um, there's not too many colours to him, so obviously that will determine how long it takes. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get a figure. I'm going to video myself. I might do it during a live stream, um, and I'm going to set a timer, a clock, and just set the, the filming going from the beginning to the end, so you can see the whole process. Uh, but if I do do a live stream then it will be a case of, I won't be talking. Um, it will just be a case of you guys can watch to see how long it takes. Just so I can see how long it does actually take me to do one figure. Um, yeah, because I mean, that would be a quite a good sort of little exercise. Because I know I have done the kill teams, um, a kill team of 10 figures, and I've done that in about three hours, which is why I reckon, say, you should be able to do a figure, 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops. Um, but again, you get a simple figure, with less colours, and yeah, no reason why he can't do it in 15 minutes. Obviously, the timings that I'm giving, um, that's once he's undercoated, uh, or primed, sorry. So once he's primed and dry brushed, because obviously you need to let that dry, um, then the actual painting process is the sort of time that I'm referring to. So as you can see, yeah, whenever I do these kind of painting videos, I am now going to be sort of trying to show you guys um, every sort of colour that I use, just in case you like the look of the figures, and you may want to replicate um, the colours that I choose. So yeah, always going to show the colours. So yeah, the um, speed paints, dip and inks, contrast paints, obviously they just go on as is, which is awesome. Any other colours, as in the, the metallic ones, and there are sometimes a few colours that I haven't got uh, in a speed paint range that I just sort of paint on normally. So obviously they do just go on normally, uh, but then obviously they get a wash afterwards just to sort of give them some shadows, highlights, um, and basically just sort of grime them up a little bit. As I always say, I like my figures 
to look a little bit sort of weathered, a bit worn, um, and not too sort of like neat and tidy looking. I, I like them to look like they've had some battle, uh, which is how I like them. Again, everyone's different in their painting techniques and what they like to see as the end result. So yeah, anything I do, guys, it's not a case of this is how it's done, quite clearly, because I'm a noob at this. Um, this is obviously a case of, well, this is how I do it, and this is the, the end result that I like. Uh, and obviously, if you like this sort of end result, then yeah, this is a sort of technique to uh, to go for. As mentioned earlier, guys, I say, let me know if there's anything you want to see me do on this channel. Um, say, I will be doing a lot of painting <laughs> of miniatures, which sounds so weird to say, considering a year or so ago, I hated painting miniatures. Uh, but yeah, I've got lots of miniatures I'm going to be painting. Uh, but I'm going to be doing some scratch bashing soon. I've started getting a nice collection of bits and bobs. Um, and yeah, if you were at the live stream that I did earlier this week, you would have heard me get very excited about the fact I've got a VCR. Um, yeah, since I'm going back to the 80s. Yeah, hey, I've got a VCR. Good stuff. Um, I know VCRs are awesome to uh, to take apart. If you've ever, ever watched um, Scratch Bashing, uh, great guy, makes lots of things, obviously, Scratch Bashing stuff. Um, yeah, and he obviously did, has got a video where he took apart a VCR. And there's so many gubbins inside that, um, yeah, you can make some awesome things. So, guys, yeah, let me know if there's anything you want to see me make um, scratch bashed. As in sort of vehicles, terrain, um, objection markers, um, or objective markers even. Sorry, this is where I'm so bunged up. I can't even hear myself talk. Um, yeah, basically, guys, let me know in the comments anything you want to see on this channel and you want to see me me do. Uh, as I obviously like trying out new things. Um and obviously love making things. And anyone out there playing the uh, the obviously drinking game, um, how are we doing? Because I've been very conscious not to keep saying obviously this time. Um, so fingers crossed you're not as drunk as you would have been in my last video where I think someone said I said the word obviously 55 times, which um, obviously is quite a lot. But um, yeah, there you go. So yeah, I'm going to be getting some more dipping inks because I'm going to try and do a video soon where I'm solely using dipping inks uh, from Green Stuff World. Because as you can see, I'm kind of using a bit of a combination of speed paints, contrast paints, and dipping inks. Um, I know there are a few other companies that do these kind of um, sort of paints. Um, I have emailed them to see if they would like to let me, um, well, try out a set of them uh, in a video. But as yet, I've not heard back from anyone. So if anyone here does uh, sort of know anyone or any companies that do these kind of paints, yeah, by all means, get them to get into contact with me. My email is in the uh, description. As, yeah, I would love to try out sort of new new paints that do um, the sort of same stuff as these contrast paints. Yeah, so this is the last process now. Obviously, I try and get everything done um, paint-wise and then do the wash as a last sort of bit. And as you can see, I'm going over, obviously, any of the metallic bits um, as well as, obviously, there's some cream colour that I used. And, yeah, this is kind of him sort of coming to the completion, which is pretty cool. Oh, obviously, but yeah, one thing I didn't mention, well, I said it again there, didn't I? Um, one thing I didn't mention, obviously, I have stuck this guy on a bit of a base, um, as opposed to using one of my clear sort of um, bases that I like to use. And this is because this guy is not going to be used in any kind of game or match. He purely is going to sit on my desk um, as a reminder to my old uh, lonely orc, who somehow I, I misplaced or lost uh, when I recently moved. So, I mean, he may well still be at the bottom of some bag, um, but I have kind of emptied most things. So I think I may well have lost my original Lonely Orc. Which, again, is why I made this chap, just so I could have him sitting on my desk, because, well, I love Orcs. Um, so, yes, it's fun to have one sitting there. And this guy is pretty awesome looking, I think. And that's it. Job done. And, yeah, very pleased with how he's come out. So very quick. Um, and I think if I wasn't doing the live stream... This guy definitely would have been around about the 15 minute mark. Um, yeah, there's only a few basic colours on him. Didn't take too long at all. And yeah, he, he shot off there. And there you go, yeah, that's him done. And this is obviously how he looks in, uh, well, all his glory. Let me know what you thought of this video, guys, down in the comments. Obviously, don't forget to hit that uh, the thumbs up button. And if you can share this anywhere on any kind of social media, that would be awesome. As obviously the uh, the more you guys can help me sort of get the videos out, uh, well, the more and more videos I can produce. Um, this month I'm going to do at least two a week, as it is October, so I'll be doing lots of Orc stuff. And yeah, don't worry guys, there will be a video showing how I made my little smoke machine um, coming out very soon. Uh, it's very simple, um, 
but I just love it. I love it for obviously the effects it does, and obviously taking some photos, it just adds a bit of atmosphere. Okay, guys, well, that's it. You all take care. Um, see you in the next one. Bye for now.